Hello there, people of the internet. So the other day I went to the gun store just to kind of go to the gun store. If you're the kind of person to watch this video and this kind of content, then hey, you're probably the kind of person to go to the gun store just to go to the gun store. Uh, and while I was there, I bought myself a bunch of black powder accessories and some black powder ammunition. And I saw this over in the corner and I was like, hey, what is that? And, uh, and uh, one of the people working at the gun store was like, well, we just got that in from the family of an old man who passed away. And I was like, well, son of a bitch, how much do you want for it? <laughs> and they were like, it's just a mishmash of random miscellaneous ammo. And I said, that's right up my alley. Give me that. So I ended up walking out with this big old ammo box here. I don't believe that this is an ammunition box, judging by what it says. I think this right here was once a, a box for mines, which is something that I have not owned until this point. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of mines, and I'm sure that somebody somewhere will tell me exactly what this is. It says 8 fuse proximity, so probably some proximity mines, some sort of landmine. Maybe anti-vehicle, maybe anti-personnel, I have no idea. But I walked out with this box full of all sorts of different goodies. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Uh, this was also in there. This is some sort of bandolier. I don't know what kind of bandolier it is. I will try and put up a picture of what it says, but this is pretty faded. It says, Remploy, R-E-M-P-L-O-Y, Pool, P-O-O-L-E, uh, D... BG, I think that's what that says. DBG number. Oh, I see. No wonder I can't read it. It's not in English. Uh, it says 1998 on it, though. So this right here is obviously not in uh, English speaking country, but it is five round stripper clips of 762 NATO ammunition. So. This right here does look like factory loads. It doesn't look like it's been reloaded at any point in time. It says 1994 and RG on it. So if I had to make a bet, I'd say this uh, ammunition is probably going to run just fine. But it all just appears to be ball rounds. I don't see any tracers, no AP rounds, no nothing like that. So I got 15, 30, 60, 75 rounds in this little bandolier of 762 NATO ammunition, which is nice to have because I have plenty of 762 NATO rifles. And inside of the box, I'm assuming is a mine box, we have all sorts of cool goodies. We got a pencil case right here. It says 765. There's a lot of 765 Argentine ammunition in this box, and I do not own a 765 Argentine rifle. So combine this with all the 765 Argentine ammunition that I have from my last ammo shipment of miscellaneous random ammunition. Uh, and I should really look into getting myself one of those Argentine rifles. But besides that, we have some stuff in here. I have no idea what it is. This looks like a Lake City round. And I, I'm willing to bet this is a 30-06. Probably 30-06 ball round. I have no idea what this is. It doesn't even say anything on it. It's, it's just a round. It's, if this is 30 out 6, then this is very different from 30 out 6. So I'm going to have to look around on that one. And then I just got, like most of this is 765 Argentine ammunition. And it's just kind of in a pencil case. <laughs> so that's cool to have. Uh, this right here, the people that the gun store bought this from, they said it was 303 British. I'm not positive if it's 303 British. Uh, it doesn't say 303, it says POF 67. Looks like 303, sounds like 303. POF, I'm pretty sure, is a factory code for surplus 303. So this is obviously military surplus, more than likely corrosive. I got some pill bottles. This right here is 357 Magnum. I don't own a 357 Magnum, but I do have a shotgun adapter for 357 Magnum. And this right here is a mix of 32 Auto and 38 Special. I don't own a 32 Auto, but there's plenty of surplus 32 Autos out there. So uh, I might legitimately look into getting one just because I got a lot of 32 Auto ammunition. And the rest of the stuff that we have in here is a whole boatload of 8mm Mauser ammunition. This right here looks like M49 stuff, but it is a mix. Uh, this stuff here, I'm positive, is Turkish. 
the color of the round is a surefire way to tell it's Turkish. Turkish ammo uh, was not really stored properly and fires exceptionally hot. So you don't want to run this in any sort of semi-automatic rifle. Uh, on the date stamp, the head stamp, it says 1954, 7.92. But this right here comes in a box that I have no idea what the origins of this box are. Maybe somebody out there could tell me what the hell this is. Ammunition, obviously Turkish. It was obviously just kind of put into this box. It says 15 cartouchos SS Cal 792. And then I have just a bunch of this M49 ammunition on stripper clips. I don't know what sort of storage conditions this stuff was in, by the way. So I have no idea if this is going to fire reliably or not. As a matter of fact, we're going to wander over yonder and send a couple of rounds downrange and see if it even fires reliably or what the whole situation with that is. But this ammo is certainly dusty. Some of these stripper clips only have four rounds in it as opposed to five. So we do have an odd amount of ammunition, but a general ballpark for the amount of 8mm Mauser ammunition I have here. And I don't know if it's all M49, it might be, you know, a mix of M49 and Turkish. Uh, the boxes look pretty worn. I'm gonna have to like go through them, see what all is in there. Definitely have some Turkish ammo, but a majority of these are M49 boxes. Now, what was I about to say? I can't quite remember what I was about to say. Anyway, I'm glad, or I hope, that this ammunition fires at least semi-reliably. Get out of there, I had a bug. <laughs> I've always had bad luck. Is that something different? No. I've always had bad luck with eight millimeter Mauser ammunition. It has always been, cause, cause a lot of times I buy surplus and it's just duds and hang fires or like eight millimeter has just been so universally uh, bad to me that I've started not liking it. And I don't want to spend a dollar around on 8mm whenever I can spend like, you know, 40 cents around, 35 cents around for 762 by 54 rimmed and get as much firepower for a lot less money. But, uh, I am happy that I got some 8mm Mauser ammunition. I'm hoping that this stuff here is not does and hang fires. I'm hoping that it runs at least semi-reliably, but only time will tell on that. I've got probably about, not including this, oh yeah, I, I was gonna say that. I've got probably about 450 rounds of 8mm Mauser ammunition here. It appears to be a mixed batch. We're gonna see what kind of condition this stuff is in. But I've got about, let's see, 250, 400, probably about 700 rounds of 8mm Mauser ammunition that I have just sitting around because it's all like Egyptian, Ethiopian, uh, some stuff from uh, a 1919 Browning that was chambered in 8mm. Uh, all of it is duds and hang fires. Uh, it's good for like learning to shoot, getting your marksmanship skills down because like you got to focus on not flinching so it is good for that but I want something reliable I'm hoping that this stuff right here was stored at least halfway decently and hopefully I get some reliable fire out of it so anyone who follows this channel knows that I have a Turkish Mauser it's just a nothing real special just a 98 model Turkish Mauser I think it's called the M38 uh, but the rear sights on it have been quite sketchy, <laughs> so I basically use it just for ammo testing and, you know, burning ammo and things like that. But I recently fastened that rear sight down, and I got it much better than it was. So now, we're going to take that Turkish rifle out to the gun range and send some rounds down range, and we're going to see if this right here is duds and or hang fires so let's wander out to the gun range i have plenty of mauser stripper clips now though all of my ethiopian and egyptian surplus came i ordered like 900 rounds of ethiopian and it came five rounds on stripper clips man i have piles of those things i could sell those alone because normally those go for like two dollars a piece i could sell those alone and make 
you know, an, enough money to buy myself another 8mm Mauser rifle. I've always had bad luck with the 8mm Mauser rifles, too. Like, it seems that all of the 8mm everything that I get has some sort of issue. The ammunition, because I normally buy surplus, always has issues unless I'm buying, like, PPU brass case stuff. Uh, the rifles, one of them is a sporterized Car 98 that doesn't really fit into the stock that it's in. And the other is that Turkish rifle, which is horridly inaccurate because the rear sight is very sketchy. And uh, even though I do have it better, uh, the rear notch on the rear sight is not the best. So let's at least go see if this ammunition fires reliably. The ammunition that is the 762 NATO ammunition, I'm fairly positive this is going to run just fine. And that uh, Argentine ammo, I don't have a way to test that, but it's Norma ammunition, so modern production, so I'm sure it would be fine. The 8mm, however, surplus, and I have very little faith in surplus 8mm Mauser ammunition. Let's take this out, run it, see how it does. Alright, so another issue that I've had with this Turkish Mauser that I have here, and boy oh boy, I've put this thing through its paces, that's for sure. Definitely got my money's worth out of it. Uh, this is a M38, I think is what the designation is. Should say somewhere on here. Ah, well. Ankara KKL 1942 Turkish Mauser. Um, I have had issues with this Mauser. Uh, the primers on certain rounds blow out. The headspace is fine on this. Firing pin is fine. The spring has plenty of tension. I have no idea what the issue is, but this rifle just does not like certain ammo. Like, uh, for example, I had, um, I think it was surplus German ammunition, uh, 8mm Mauser ammunition that I had fired through this rifle and I had on multiple occasions primers blow out and into my face. So just to be safe, whenever I fire this, I'm going to go ahead and just like fire offhand, uh, like into the dirt on the first round just to see what the primer looks like just to test the ammo just to make sure that it's not going to detonate in my face but everything about this rifle like i was very confused whenever that happened but it's happened on multiple things not just the surplus german stuff and i really want to like this gun it is such a nice rifle uh I really want to like the 8mm Mauser round too. Like, it's very smooth, very comfortable. Uh, I'm sure it's very accurate whenever it is used by someone who can, you know, actually utilize the accuracy and who can actually see. I do have new glasses now, but that rear post is just so small, or that rear notch is just so small. The sights no longer wobble. Uh, they're properly tensioned, so that's definitely a good sign. My concern with the sights is under recoil. I'm curious to see if they're gonna get loose again. So I'm going to go ahead, chamber around. I'm just gonna fire into the ground and we're gonna see if it's a dud or a hang fire. If it actually fires, we're gonna see if the primer blows up, if we get any split casings, etc., etc. So here we go. All right, does not feel like it was a dud. That was a lot of recoil though, goddamn. All right, let's have a look at this round. Primer looks okay. It smells kind of funny. I just finished cleaning these guns. I got them all nice and lubricated, so you might see some extra smoke. That's not from the ammo. That is from the uh, lubrication that I have in the rifle. All right, well, we fired around. Primers looked okay. Everything looked fine. I'm gonna go ahead and aim downrange. Sights look like they're holding up okay. That was just one round. Well, let's go ahead and send her around down at her steel. Okay. Ooh, wow, this stuff has more recoil than the other stuff I've fired. Two rounds, not hang fires. That's a really good sign. I'm really hoping that this stuff works out in my favor. I had some Turkish stuff that I fired through this Turkish rifle whenever I first got it, and it was quite nice, but it was still kind of on the sketchy side quite a few hang fires quite a few duds but it did fire semi-reliably this stuff right here two rounds in is firing semi-reliably the primers still look fine that one right there uh, did not look like it split let's send another round down range Ooh, no 
Definitely. Lots of recoil behind these rounds. Definitely got plenty of oil and various funk in this rifle as well. All right, sending it downrange. Ah, I think I'm hitting a little bit low. Maybe I have to aim just a hair higher. It's hard for me to really gauge where my front sight is supposed to go because that notch is just so tiny. Like with my eyes, it just kind of blurs. So I try to stick the notch where it is that I think it's supposed to go. Let me go ahead and bring that notch just a hair higher because I'm pretty sure I'm hitting low. Maybe that one was a little too high. All right, well, five rounds, they all cycled reliably. I'm pretty, pretty sure this stuff is burden primed, so it's not something that I'd be able to reload very easily. I'm also fairly certain that the stuff is corrosive, so I will have to clean my rifle after testing it. Your sight looks like it's still holding on well, though. That's a really good sign. Now, if I could just figure out where to hold that front sight. Do you guys have problems with these rifles, like aiming down your sights like I do? Because, man, I just can't see through that, that minusculely small V-notch. I'm probably going to, like, take a file or something and just make it just a little bit bigger that would be that would be perfect or maybe i'll find another mauser rear sight uh, and throw that on here i don't know i'll figure something out i want to keep this rifle original though so uh hard to hard to really say what i'm gonna do well actually i know exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go grab another five rounds that was kind of fun i feel like blasting off some more rounds so i'm gonna go grab another five rounds we're gonna see if those are duds and or hang fires Okay, so I have my tactical wrapping paper down there, left over from Christmas of who the hell knows how many years ago. What I'm going to do is right here at about the 40 yard line, I'm going to send some rounds through my eight millimeter a Turkish Mauser. I'm gonna prop myself up against the tree that the GoPro's currently on, so you guys are not going to see me fire these rounds. But I wanna see if I have any rounds, you know, tumbling or anything like that. I've never actually tested this rifle for tumbling, but that would certainly explain why I have some rounds that are right on target, right where I want them to be, and other rounds that are, uh, that I can't tell where the hell they went. <laughs> so, this Mauser right here, we're gonna go ahead and see where these are hitting. I'm gonna aim the same way with the sights to see if I'm just hitting consistently high, consistently low, or see if we have a bigger problem. I got five rounds in the rifle. I'm probably going to do like, I'll, I'll do two and I'll walk down there, see what they look like. All right, now you guys cannot see me firing this rifle, but I assure you I'm about to fire and you will likely have ringing in your ears. I will lower the volume of the ringing or lower the volume of the fire during editing. All right, there's one. It seemed to have hit on target. I saw some smoke come up behind the target. Okay, there's our two rounds. I'm gonna go ahead, wander down there, see what the story is behind those two rounds. Very interesting results. One of the rounds hit just a hair low, but it was on center target. And the other round hit like exceptionally far right. Let me go ahead, fire off another round. Uh, I'm fairly certain that wasn't me because we're not very far away and I am a better shot than that. But just for funsies, let's set another round. I'm gonna make sure that I do not pull this round. You know what? <laughs> let's. Let's send another. I want to see if we get any sort of consistency from this rifle. Okay, I sent all five rounds. I had one, like that one was so far right. That couldn't have been me. Oh my God, let me go see where these other ones have landed. All right, so we have some very interesting results from this rifle and it certainly explains a lot. 
Alright, well, obviously I was aiming for our uh, X right here. I got two rounds, pretty much a little bit low. That was what I was expecting. I was expecting to make a little group right about there. I had two rounds hit exceptionally high, very far right, but they were consistent. Like, these are riding a line. That's unusual. <laughs> I've never seen something like that before. Uh, but I was aiming here. I was expecting to hit right about here just where, because I knew this rifle was hitting low. But what do we have right here? That is a tumbled round. That is not good. That's not good. Oh no, my Mauser is tumbling rounds. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> Now, I don't know if these tumbled and they just so happened to land in the same spot, but they both, get off me, you. They both landed, like, obviously one's a little bit higher than the other, but they landed in basically the same windage pattern right there, and they don't look like tumbling rounds. Those two on the bottom, very close to each other. That is exactly what I was expecting. And then we have a tumbled round right there. That... That is not good. <laughs> that is not a good thing, but that certainly explains why I have, you know, sometimes a great accuracy with this rifle. I can hit things very, uh, very well with it. Well, until the sights, you know, come loose. But sometimes I have phenomenal accuracy with this rifle, and then sometimes I have very poor accuracy with this rifle. And that right there tells me why. These right here... I have no idea how to explain those. They don't look like tumbling rounds. Maybe we just got, I don't know, this one right here looks like it was kind of tumbling. That might have started tumbling. This one right here might have just hit nose first. Maybe it's just coincidence that it'll lined up like that. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. But it is something that is unsurprising. Well, I guess now I only have one 8mm Mauser rifle. It's a sporterized Car 98. And that one I know for a fact is dead on accurate. Well, am I surprised? No, this is honestly kind of what I was expecting. Uh, especially since the, fr the rear sights are fastened and I was shooting at that steel target. I was sometimes hitting it. I knew I was firing low. Sometimes hitting it, sometimes not. So... Uh, well, I did get this rifle pretty cheap. Uh, I guess it does warrant a barrel replacement. Hopefully that barrel will not send the rounds tumbling. I don't know. I might just keep this as like a beater gun because I use this gun for like mad minutes and things like that. Things that don't require a lot of accuracy. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure out what it is that I feel like doing with this rifle. But man, that is definitely disappointing. Definitely disappointing. Now I know how my ex feels, god damn it. <laughs> anyway, the rounds did in fact fire, and they fired flawlessly. I see no issues in the primers either. Uh, I guess sending them through this rifle right here would be a waste, of, a waste of ammunition, so I just have my Car 98 that's been sporterized. I should get myself, I should, ooh, I should get myself, oh, like one of those Yugoslavian uh, Car 98 clones. Are they Yugoslavian? I think so. But I should just like find one of those. But then again, I also like, I like straight handled bolt action rifles. I don't necessarily like the curved handle just because I like the way it feels. I like the way the bolt on this rifle feels. But man, I hate the way it shoots. <laughs> I know I wasn't really testing the rifle for this video, but at the same time I was testing the rifle in this video. Uh, but the ammunition did work very well. I'm very pleased with it. Unfortunately, I'm going home disappointed. Ah oh, well. I'm sure I'll figure out something. I'll just... I'll, I'll mull it over. I'll mull over what it is that I feel like doing with this rifle. Because now that I know that it's... I know, I know for a fact that we got tumbling rounds. Ah, uh, man, that sucks. <laughs> the amount of ammunition that I've put through this rifle, I've definitely got my money's worth out of it, though. And a lot of times whenever I shoot this rifle, uh, I'm not necessarily shooting for accuracy. Like, I'm just kind of mad-minute lobbing lead. That is one thing that this rifle is good for. 
Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'm sorry that we're ending this on such a bummer. Uh, su such a bummer uh, outro. I, I'm probably going to fix this rifle, in all honesty. Uh, Mauser barrels, I mean, they are, they are very common. This is just a 98 model. I can find one. I could have someone take this old one off, put a new one on. Maybe I'll get, like, a new production one and just ensure that it hits where it needs to hit. Ooh! Ooh! Or maybe I'll convert this rifle to something else. That might be fun. Because, I mean, I've always had problems with 8mm. Why don't I, like, deck this rifle out and turn it into something else? I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll look online, see what kind of conversion ideas I come up with. I'll figure out something to do with this gun, but... This is not what the gun will be doing, obviously. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more. I do stuff like this all the time. It's literally just my way of life. Uh, if you like the video, do me a solid and actually like the video, give me an F in the chat uh, or in comments for my rifle that I want to love so much, but I just can't because <laughs> it just gives me so many problems. I am going to go chug like like four cups of water and then I'm going to probably come back out and make another video on some other topic. I'll figure out what it is that I feel like making another video on next. So I'm going to go do that. You guys go off. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.